Right is uptown and sideways of the absolutely adorable individuals. Welcome back to League Unlocked. My name is Eric Finally, Han Solo. On today's epi, as we are doubling, tripling down, actually, on some of the weekend action because it truly was historic in terms of number one, the fact that it was playoffs, and number two, I don't know if in all the years that I've been watching competitive League of Legends, there was more throws, game tossing, bad moments giving away leads in a single weekend than I have ever seen. Uh, this past weekend blew everything out of the water. Multiple series, multiple regions, although frankly it's the, the LEC of the LCS. It's the West, let's be honest. There weren't any egregious throws really uh, in the LPL or the LCK. Maybe, maybe the Weibo one had a little bit of whoopsie dipsy moments but really yeah north america and europe were the main egregious acts on the rift we're going into the game of thrones we're going into worst of uh three specific series i want to look at and i even thought about talking about g2 bds because you look at it's less of a throw and more of a choke, which is why I'm not talking about it, but BDS getting reverse swept and the fashion that they got completely dismantled, especially in games three and five in that series, was egregious in its own right. But you can't really call that a throw. Again, that was a choke job. So actual throws. Let's start with uh, what was probably the lowest quality of gameplay when you're talking about that throw, and that is Dignitas versus NRG. So NRG, they had a 5, 6K gold lead eventually, and we're looking specifically just at Game 5. Again, truthfully, you could probably talk about multiple games within this series, but the throws coming out of NRG were specifically just terrible mechanical plays, decision-making. First, Dokla goes in alone, gets caught out. FBI's farming by himself, and then Palafox decides he wants to Valkyrie in as Corky and add another death to the table even contracts flashing at the end these flashes are insane what are these guys doing and somehow dignitas managed to throw the game back to nrg before they get on the ultimate wrong page and you have dokla flashing in kenan alting some invincible bard alties for the anti-synergy between who he and him and that ends up pretty much being the final team fight. This is with an infernal soul that NRG are losing this game. So, really, we got the weekend roaring with the disappointing reverse sweep and then this game. This is what set the precedent. It set the stage for some of these horrible throws back and forth. But NRG, absolutely, you should have no business losing. I know objective bounties uh, make a 6k gold lead go away in basically a single team fight if you're getting a couple of turrets... Uh, and a dragon or something afterwards, but they were in such a positive seat to be able to close this game out and then just multiple, not even great plays by Dignitas, not even, you know, slight misplays, just egregious fail flashes. What are you doing? Looking like solo queue moments for NRG to throw that one away and be eliminated and probably end up being the last time that we see those five members playing on a squad together, which is too bad for the magic that we got out of 2023. But even though the quality of gameplay was a little bit higher later on in the week, we now jump to that Cloud9 FlyQuest series where really only game one you can talk about in terms of a horrible throw. And much like the NRG Dignitas one, there were throws back and forth. And much like the other ones you can talk about this weekend, C9 FlyQuest... Uh, Cloud9's in control for basically 25 minutes, and then it ends up uh, just being Vulcan and guys getting caught out in a couple of fights, and the 5v5's never able to really happen. I mean, this one, Jojo, Pian, and Berserker, all they're doing is flashing away, running, quad on Smolder, gets to completely take over, but then FlyQuest immediately throws things back, and this all stems from Masu getting some unlucky turret aggro. Jojo, Pian blows his combo on him before he dies, and the Ash dies for this push which is obviously uh the most important thing because if ash is alive this isn't even a close base race but quad also gets some unlucky turret anchor so he has to go out of range it takes them so long to kill that turret and then you're left with ivern alistair renekton obviously they do absolutely zero damage 
to the Nexus and FlyQuest. You can even see the reaction after that if you watch the cams. Even Inspired and the boys are laughing. They're laughing at the end of the game. Obviously, that probably speaks to the confidence they had in this series, but this was an entire season of Game of Thrones in a single game because it Cloud9 again fully in control for still the majority of the game 25 plus minutes before they throw it away and then all of a sudden somehow after FlyQuest was what like six or seven auto attacks away from winning the game it's a 6k gold lead for Cloud9 so yes Blabber and Inspired are both laughing after that one because it was such an absolutely absurd and ridiculous game. What an... A roller coaster. If you're a fan of any of these games, a diehard fan throughout this weekend, it must have been an absolute treacherous time on your heart because the roller coaster ups and downs, ebbs and flows, throws and catches that went back and forth was absolutely insane and uh, you know we're accustomed to that in the LCS usually for a throw to happen uh, it's from a team not knowing how to close out a game it's usually more so a mistake than somebody coming back into it but it's it's a little bit of both as was the case in both of those series FlyQuest obviously proceeds to completely dumpster uh, the rest of that set against Cloud9 so really the first 25 minutes of that first game were the highlights of the series for Cloud9 FlyQuest is a little bit less egregious than the NRG throw because obviously they bounced back in the series and they got a little bit unlucky. It wasn't just kind of brain dead mechanical misplays of flashing in when you shouldn't be uh, like the NRG one. But both of those were really bad. But the worst throws, throws plural of the weekend has to go to Mad Lions, Koi, and Fnatic. And this spreads across multiple games mostly game four and five but to varying results because first mad lions throw to even let Fnatic get back into the game in game four and then it looks like this should be done and dusted close it out in that fourth game before Razork and Jun both lose their minds and are flashing in and completely whiffing in their engage abilities and then the 5v3 comes out uh for MDK who eventually despite Noah being a late game Zeri is unable to uh, carry or lifesteal enough because there's five members. He gets popped and then eventually Frescawi TPs in and MDK just closes it out from there. A single team fight basically, but uh, then MDK looks like they're in control in game five before they throw a team fight and Fnatic comes in. And then in the saddest game five ending you will ever see, how do you leave the mid lane wide open? When Fnatic just killed that inhibitor 60 seconds ago, they took down that inhib and look at them all laughing. Of course, they're ridiculous. They've never seen, they've never been able to win a game in such fashion, let alone a game five to go to the grand finals. MDK completely turn off their macro game sense. There's not even a kill. Nobody dies in the final team fight in a game five because everyone... Just bum rushes the Nexus on Fnatic to close it out. But uh, MDK to get to that point was a throw. And whatever went in their mind to think that they were going to ever find an angle to get a flank when Fnatic has the option to just run it down mid lane. That seems like a play that happens in game two, week three of the regular season in the spring split. When players are still working together, chemistry on a team, who's doing what. The fact that this is... The winner finals? Game five? A play like that is happening is absolutely ludicrous. I, I, there were moments in almost every series that happened this weekend that you could talk about and left going insane, but really, these three series were the worst of the worst when it comes to throws, and you got to talk about Mad Lions and Fnatic as the worst throw of the weekend. And again, very briefly touched on it, but objective bounties and, uh, you know, player bounties, being able to get thousand gold from one guy who's 8-0 to get back into the game obviously in this modern era of the competitive scene it's much easier to come back into games even we've seen 10k gold deficits basically disappear in a swing of five minutes if you win a couple of team fights and string that together with some turrets and other neutral objectives but these were different beasts different animals over the weekend and the fact that we had back to back 
to back days of these egregious throws really makes you think how do we actually feel about the LCS and the LEC heading towards the World Championship? Because this is not the quality of gameplay that is going to net you even a single win against the LPL or the LCK at this year's World Championship. But the one thing, the most important thing that this does do for Western fans is it makes for an entertaining time. It makes for a great broadcast. The casters were having a good time. And it's impossible to predict who's going to win because even when you jump up six or 7,000 gold ahead, it don't matter. You lose one team fight or not even a team fight. You have your guys walk in one by one by one by one, blow their flashes and die, and you can lose the game at any given moment. And that's what makes this modern era so damn exciting. But that is it today. For League Unlock. My name is Eric, and thank you to all you people for suffering through reliving a lot of those throws if you're fans of those squads. I do apologize for that, but uh, I do thank you as well for hanging out as always, and you know we will catch you on that flippity flip.